All right, as we start out and as that thing is making its way around, if you look up on the screen here, a question had been asked a while back about the difference between DP and SP. And I went and looked online and went out to Stack Overflow, and I thought this was one of the better things. That's the URL if you're interested in looking at it. But it explains the difference between pixels, DPs, and SPs. And if you look up there, it also says DIP. You can literally write either DP or you can write DIP. In some of the older versions of programs, people wrote DIP, all right, but now it's recommended that you write DIP all the time. So the bottom line is when you go and you take a look, about, about a third of the way down, it does this where it explains what everything is. I'm not going to read any of this to you, but you can see it there. All right, and then at the bottom, it talks about DP versus SP. SP, the scale independent pixels, all right, I just call them scalable pixels. That's what's recommended for fonts. The DP, which are density independent pixels, are what are recommended for everything else. Everybody hear that? All right. Now, do you have to do that? No, but the idea is they're both set up to scale. So ideally, at least, they'll work better. Okay? All right, so that's the first thing. I can close that. Second thing, if, if I had not told you this before, <clears throat> in December of, not last year, but in December of 2016, all right, we had to make books, book selections for the 2017-2018 semester, all right, to our 2017-2018 school year, of which we're in right now. And at that time, when I asked, well, what are we going to be using for, like, the Java class? It's like, well, we don't have a book. I said, should I pick one? Well, it's up to you, all right? And I decided not to pick one because I still wasn't sure if this was going to be a Java class or an Android class or a Kotlin class or just what the heck it was going to be, all right? So didn't pick a book. Again, a couple of you wrote down on your course evaluations that you would rather have spent 100 bucks and had a book that you could use. And that's a very fair thing to say. Well, now December 20, 2017 has come and gone, and we had to come up and we had to pick out a book for the 2018-2019 school year. Right, so people who are going to be coming in next year, and I have I I don't remember and I can't find the email. I can't remember what book we picked for the Android slash Java slash Kotlin class, but I think it's that Muroc book, which to me is on a one to ten is at best a five. All right, now, so why am I telling you this? Well, I found I got sent an email from raywenderlich.com the other day, and they had a couple of different books in here. The first one is called Android Apprentice. You'll notice it's not cheap. It's $55, but it's all on Kotlin. All right, and I was talking with Ethan about this before. You can buy the PDF, etc., but when you look through it, it's got 31 chapters. There would be no way, even if the book had only four or 500 pages in it that I could see being able to teach a class like that and going over 31 chapters. Not to do that, give you time to write your own stuff, etc. But what I liked about this book is it said near the beginning, build four complete Android apps from scratch. So I thought, well, that'd be a good book. The problem was that book was not available December 31st of last year. So it won't be used. All right, thank you. So it could be used possibly, but not until the 2019-2020 school year. All right. And going along with that, there is another one that they have that's called Kotlin Apprentice. So you might say, well, since you, you're saying, oh, Kotlin's big, etc., why don't we use that one? That one's just on how to learn Kotlin. That's not a Kotlin Android book. All right. It's more on how to use Kotlin. I'm going to try to get a hold of the people from here and see if I can get copies of both, hard copies of both. They probably won't give me free PDFs because they think, well, then I might share them with you. I wouldn't do that, all right, because that's not legal. But, you know, I'll see whether or not the, that they'll give me anything, and I'll take a look at it. Hopefully, it's something that we'll be able to use in the future. All right, and the last thing that I wanted to tell you, I wanted to make sure I gave kudos. 
the guy right here, the guy who teaches this class, this is one of the classes I'm involved with on Udemy. Yes. Okay, did you hear that? If you're using Ethan's, he recommends that you do a clean, clean project, then a build project, then a build an APK. Okay. All right. Then, when you run it, hit the get forecast button, and then look at your launch. Okay, look, yeah. Yeah. All right. But again, the other thing I wanted to tell you was this is the course content in this course I've been taking. Kotlin for Beginners. I went through that. That was, it's, I'm not going to say it was a waste, but basically it was. It was how to do Hello World in Kotlin. Okay. Then it was the resume. Well, I made changes to it, but he built his own resume up. All right. Then he had the weather. I'm, I'm using a lot of his. Technically, what I'm doing probably isn't considered kosher. I hope it's legal. All right. But I've been going through his stuff. All right. I have not looked at his um, JavaScript and Kotlin. I have not looked at his Kotlin and programmers. His to-do list is okay. And he's got another thing in here that does a repo type of app. And I, I didn't really do anything with it. All right. But the next time that this course is taught, it's got to have, there's got to be more of a process than there is right now. And you are all guinea pigs. And I'm sorry about that, but you're all guinea pigs. Okay. The good news is that in this last six weeks or so of class, you know what your assignments are. They're twofold. They're to do that project, and they're to finish up your portfolio. And that's what you've got left to do. Most everyone is caught up other than that. Now, if you haven't turned in that resume project and or if you haven't turned in that, te that, that take home test, those are due. You should have turned those in already. All right. So I want them. All right. So turn them in as soon as you possibly can, like yesterday. All right. So I'm going to grab this is Ethan's weather app. And when I bring it up, I want to say one more thing. In particular about the app and it's when I get done if you go well duh that's a good thing when I bring this up hopefully you all agree with this let's say you let, let's let's say that Valerie didn't even didn't, didn't even take a copy let's just say she did all right and she brings it up and she makes changes and it all works etc you all realize that at the top when the package statement is going to have Ethan's name on it do you get that so if you decide you're going to put that on your port in your portfolio, you probably want to see if you could make a change to that. I don't know if you can just blanket go out and change it and have it still work or not, but I'm sure you can Google that if you want to to find it out. All right. I will tell you. All right. I will tell you when I this this is this is uh, as I told the class this morning. This is not a threat. This is not a promise. This is a statement of fact. When I'm grading your portfolios, especially your portfolio, I'm going to be picky as hell. If you've got bad English, if you've got words you've spelled wrong, etc., it's not so much, are you going to take off for that? I'm going to let you know about all that stuff. I want this to be as professional, considering you're all graduating, all right, Colin, maybe in December, but the rest of you are all graduating. I want these to come off as being as professional as possible. All right, and it's almost done. So hopefully where we got to with everybody in here, hopefully where we got to yesterday was we were, what have we been able to do so far? We built that opening screen. All right, and on that opening screen, you are able to go and click the Get Forecast button. And when you click the Get Forecast button, at least hopefully, we can now, when we go into LogCat, you can see the information that's in there. But it was just those three um, days worth of information in. So there's not much in there. Okay, literally, there's not much in there. So, as we start back up again, I'm going to close this, bring up Ethan's.
And again, hopefully this goes without saying also. Anything, any, you know, I, I, one of my students asked me once, <clears throat> and actually he had graduated and he came back and we were talking. He was having a hard time, time getting hired. And I'm going to say this and you might laugh, but I, I, I said this to him, believe it or not, and he agreed. And he said, do you know why I'm not getting hired? And I said, I have a pretty good idea. And he goes, could you tell me? I said, can I be honest with you? And he said, yes. I said, it's because you're an asshole. All right. And I didn't even have to explain it to him because he knew what I meant. He would argue with everybody on everything. He thought he knew everything about everything. He would constantly contradict me in class. And, and there, were, there were times when the people in the class would tell him to shut up <clears throat> because they just couldn't take it. What I'm getting to, though, is anything you put on your resume or anything you put on your portfolio, you should be ready to be able to back up at a job interview. And he said, well, duh, yeah, well, that's good. So what I'm saying is you put anything you want to put from this class on your portfolio. But somebody might think if you've got to, if, you know, whatever, whatever it is you put in here, let's say you put in this one, that, you want, that people will think you understand list views, that you understand how to use JSON, etc. So what I'm saying is when you put that stuff out there, you know, don't, don't it all feel bad about going in when you're interviewing and telling somebody, well, we kind of did this project as a class. I mean, I think it's better to err on the side of caution. You may, may not agree with that. All right. There were, you know, I, I've interviewed literally, I have interviewed hundreds of people in my life. And some of them, it was pretty obvious when you listened to them, they were lying to you during the interview. All right. All right. Again, this is what I mentioned to you before. Then taking a look in here. So if I come to the forecast activity, for example. So notice now mine says edu.rankin.ewilson. And all I mentioned, I think you'd stepped out for a second, Ethan, but uh, was that if, if they're going to use that, they're going to want to change that. All right. At least I would want to. Maybe you think you don't have to. So whatever. All right. So the first thing we want to do as we begin this today is I want to bring up this weather help file. All right. This weather help dot KT file. All right. And if we look at the interface that's right here, all right, right now it says this. All right. One thing, and again, you're all smart people. Right now it says list forecast. For lack of better words, what this right here, this, what this is that you see in blue, those are those three highs and lows that we manually put in. Does that make sense to everybody? We're saying it's out here, all right, and we're, you know, that's the end of it. And somewhere in here, there it is. There was the base URL, etc. all right. But what I'm telling you is we got this to work, but we're going to have to change this because we don't want to read it from those list of three different weather items. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's where we're going to start. So we're going to change this. Now, I'm not going to run through it, but again, if I go out to the Yahoo thing, because we looked at this already, and you start to peruse your way down, at the top of the Yahoo thing, at the very top, they've got an object in there that's called query. Then under query, they've got an object that's called result. Then under result, they've got an object that's called channel. Then under channel, they've got an object that's called item. And under item, that's where they finally have the forecast with the highs and lows. Does that make sense to everybody? So we're going to have to drill our own way down as we're doing that for it to make some sense. All right. So if we want to be able to actually use that information, that's what I'm telling you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this call. Now, we could call, for example, we could say in here, we could put this. Don't put that in. We could type in query right there. The problem is... A lot of the words that we're going to use in here, again, like query, result, channel, item, might be keywords. So rather than calling this query, we're going to call it weather query. Don't worry that we're getting an error. Don't worry about that. That'll get fixed. All right. 
But what I'm telling you is, just to make sure there are no name conflicts, we're going to preface most everything that we do with weather. Okay? Now, what, what, what I have read online is, oh, Kotlin's really smart. It'll know based on the context whether to use your name query or the query that means something. I, I don't trust that. All right? So that's why I'm saying that we're going to preface all this stuff. To me, that makes more sense to do this, to do that. All right? Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, we don't need this anymore. I'm not asking, I'm telling you, that was the class, remember, high, low, high, low, high, low. That's what we used. We don't need that anymore, so it's gone. All right? Now, if you choose to, rather than removing it, okay, you could have just commented it out. Okay, if you wanted to, you could have done that. All right, we're going to replace that. Well, you might guess, if you look up on the screen here, you might guess what class we're going to replace that with. Class weather query. Okay? And you'll notice, as soon as I did that, boom. Oops. That error went away, all right? This is a very different language than Java is. You don't need to use the word new. You don't need to do a lot of things you need to do in Java. Remember in Java how we did a get text and a set text, etc.? You don't need to do that stuff, all right? Most of the time, if you try to use something Java-ish in here, it'll, it'll do the best it can to figure out what it is you're trying to do. But if you're using Kotlin, you should really try to at least attempt to write your code in the Kotlin way. Hopefully what I just said made sense. All right. Okay. Now, what I've got written down here is what I ended up going over with you yesterday. But I, I just want to say one more thing because I, I may or may not have explained it well yesterday. And there were all sorts of errors on here. So I'm going to just come in and do this. This is, I'm not writing code. Not writing full, I'm not writing a program, but I just want you to see this. Okay? Now, if I do this, so imagine I started myself up a Kotlin program, and I typed in here var age equal 21. All right, so imagine I just type that in. What's going to happen as soon as I type in ag right there on the next line, the system's going to come up with that help, and it's going to tell me, it's going to say that age is an integer. Does that make sense to everybody? It knows, based on context, that that indeed is an integer. So it can only hold values that are within the integer range. One value that is not within the integer range is this. You can't do that. If you attempt to do that, you will get an error message. All right? Now, this is why I'm, I'm going back to tell you this, because yesterday I said you could do this, and then it would work. I was wrong. I gave you the wrong syntax. Not on purpose, but I gave you the wrong syntax anyway. So I want to give you the right syntax now. I could come in here and then say, colon, int, with a question mark. Now, that's referred to, that is referred to now as a nullable int. What that means is it is legal for that to have a value of null. So think about this. Think about why you'd want to do this and why you wouldn't want to do it. All right? Maybe you've had this before. I don't know. You know, For example, back in the day when we did the, um, the BMI program, what if you didn't put a number in for the height or for the weight? you get an error when you ran the program, all right? Now, could you get around that? Yes, and we're going to actually talk about that a little bit later today. But by default, you, the program would blow up. But if you did something like this, so if we had done this, var height, all right, int, and let's just say we'll set it to 72. And then let's say later on, we for some reason, we did this, where we set height, to null. The program now should not blow up when you run it. You're going to get an answer of null, 
but it won't blow up. Okay? And again, if you say, I don't get it, yeah, you do. Remember back in the days of JavaScript when you would attempt to do something and you didn't put a numeric value in there and it came back NAN? Remember that? That's kind of what this is. All right? <clears throat> now, if I do this, if I come back and I do this and I say height 2 equals height. Does it make sense to you looking at that that height 2 is now also a nullable int? Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. What if I want to copy the value from height to height 2, but I don't want it to be nullable? Then I do this. That means turn off the nullableness. So height is still nullable. That is still like this. But height 2 now, we turned it off with the two exclamation points. All right? The reason that that becomes important in this program is we're going out to the Internet. We're giving it paths. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff. That's real easy to screw something up when you're doing that. The Internet could be down. You could type in a wrong path name. The site could be down, etc. So a lot of the stuff that we'll be working with today, and some of it yesterday, had that question mark with it. And that's the reason that it did. In case it came up with a null, in fact, Colin, I think you said when you ran yours yesterday, you got null for a couple. That's why. It didn't blow up, though. It just gave you values of null. All right? The good news is if it gave you values of null, it's much easier, you know, when, when, you, when you print out values and they're null, it's much easier to go back and debug it because the program didn't blow up. All right? Sometimes otherwise you got to start commenting stuff out to make it work. And I don't mean to say, yeah, you know what? You should take every variable you ever create and make it nullable. No. But there may be a reason that you want to do that with some, most, most of your variables. Again, it just depends. All right. So the next thing I want to do is if you look up on the screen, please, everybody, if you made the first change I told you to make, you'll notice that any place now that I'm putting in list forecast, it's going to be red. That's to be expected because we removed list forecast from here. So we defined it originally up here. We're using it down in here, so it's giving us errors. So we have to change that. All right? Okay. So for our callback in here, we want this callback to be a weather query. Oops. So I'm just going to want that want that to say rather <clears throat> callback bracket weather query. And you may or may not have noticed the, we have IntelliSense there too. Now, at least, it's not blowing up. All right? All right. Now, that's all fine. Everything in here looks good for right now. But now I'm going to go look over at forecast activity. And... So please go to your forecastactivity.kt file. Notice what lines are in error right now. See those? They're all the ones using that forecast that we just changed. All right. So we're going to have to go back into all of those. And anywhere that it's got forecast, we're going to have to try to at least change that to weather query. Right. Could I have missed one? I sure could have. All right. I'll let the system, there's another one way on the end here. Okay. Now, when you look here, now notice this. 
See that line? Notice how these are red, are red here? Because that was something that we defined for our forecast. All right? So we're going to have to make some changes in here as well. All right? And we will make, let's, let's just do a couple things. For right now, okay, I just want to show you this because we have to make some changes. I'm going to remove this for loop that's in here. I'm going to remove the whole thing. We'll end up putting it back for the most part later. But for now, I'm just going to remove it. Okay? All right. The first thing I'm going to say, and please don't type for a second because I, I want you to see this. Okay? Besides, knowing the way I type, I'll probably make a mistake anyway. So I'm just going to type in this. Type title equals response question mark dot body question mark dot query dot results dot channel dot title. All right. And it's giving me, a, I knew it would have to give me at least one error. Unresolved reference query. either. Well, we'll have to figure out what the problem is here. But this is what I want to tell you is this. First of all, notice where it says title. Everybody see that title equals? That's the title on The title up here that says weather, see that? You can reset that by just saying title equals. All right. Well, weather is fine for our beginning one that we have here, our activity main. That's fine. But when we go from one page to the other page, all right, and we go to this page, ideally what this is going to say is something like weather forecast for Wentzville, Missouri. Something like that. All right, that's much better than having it just say weather. It's fine for an opening page, all right, but it's not fine for our inside page, all right? Now, I've got my code written, and my code is written, whoops, my code is written based on what I had put in there before. So it is possible, you know, I, and I know that this worked before, but using Ethan's note, I'm not blaming him at all. But what I'm saying is, we might have to make some changes. I don't know. We're going to find that out. All right? But that should have worked. The, the, the main thing I want to tell you, though, when you look on the screen here, if you all would please look up on the screen, notice those question marks. Any one of those can fail. Since any one of those can fail, we put the question mark there because if it fails, it's going to now return no. And the program will not blow up. That's the big thing. Now, if we did this, and again, I'm not sure why that's not working, but if we did this, I'm going to, and you don't have to type this in, but I'm going to put in here print line. I'm going to copy everything that's in here, except for that title on the end. Okay? All right. So if we print in, put in all of this stuff, and then on the end here, I said dot forecasts. Okay, if we did that, then what should actually end up printing out is pretty much the address of where that forecast object lives. All right, and if you say, I don't know what you mean, yeah, you do. If you remember in Java, one of the things that we did in Java is when we got into it a little bit, remember when we overrode the two string method? Remember that? We wrote our own two string method. And if you did not write 
a two-string method, if you did not overwrite it, and you said system.out.println, the name of your object, all that it printed out was an address and memory of where the object lived. What I'm telling you is if we tried doing something like this, that's what it would do, is it would go out and it would print the address and memory where that lives. All right? Okay. We don't have to do that. Now, I'm going to have to try to figure out why that doesn't work. It's an unresolved reference. I understand the error. Not sure why we're getting the error. All right, so we'll have to try to figure that out. We'll take a break in about 10 minutes or so, and I'll see if I can figure it out during that time. All right, I have literally three steps to go over today. That's the end of step one. Now, that the title, you have to you have to go in and take a look at the JSON, and in the JSON, there's a title in there that actually has the name of the city. That's the title. And this title right here, all right, notice that it's in forecast activity, so that's our second page. So I, did I answer your question? Okay. Now, we're not changing anything if it fails. We're just going to do a print line that says not implemented. You could make, you could put a something there that says didn't work. You could put whatever you wanted there. One thing that I didn't do a good enough job of, and I wish I would have done a better job of, is you should all get used to using LogCat. All right, it's a great tool. You can even write your own stuff out to LogCat. You can put it in different colors, and you can do a lot of different things with it. So next time, if I'm the person teaching this class, and I would think I would be, all right, I'm going to spend more time on that. I'm going to force people to use it because it's an excellent debugging tool. All right. <clears throat> so see if we can fix this one. Try to fix this one, but, you know, hopefully it'll work. So the next thing I'm going to do, and this is going to involve a bit of typing. So we'll put this in, and then we'll take a break. I'd like you, please, to go to the weather help file, which is right here. Right now, we've got this class, Weather Query, okay? And that is at the top. You understand what I'm saying? So when you, when you go in, let's see if I can find that from yesterday. All right, we started to look at this yesterday. It doesn't matter which of these we look at. But when you look here, you notice we've got a thing called query. All right, you start working your way in there. All right, eventually we're going to get to something that looks like that. That's the title that you mentioned. Okay, see that? That's the kind of thing that we want to be able to pull out of there. All right, but the point is there's a lot of stuff in here. All right, and... Right now, the thing on the outside of this is something that's called query. Inside of query, if you look on the screen here, we've got results. Inside of results, we've got channel. Inside of channel, we've got units, etc. You can see all that stuff. All right, so we're going to do some write some code for some of that stuff in just a minute. So again, we talked about this yesterday. If I do a control A and copy all that, control C, and if I go out and end up putting it in here, and for some reason it still didn't work, it's going to look kind of garbagey. In fact, I guess this was the one. If I go out and look at this, this is that weather forecast. This is everything. So if I go in here and I put that in here, and hit enter, that's I don't know why it shows it to me like that. I want, I want it to show me the garbagey looking one raw data. That's that's the way this stuff actually looks. All right. And we ended up using a, a JSON purifier, for lack of better words, to make it look nice. But that's what it is. Now, you're all smart people, and you can all look in here. And when you look, for example, if I get down to about in here, take a look on the screen there at what's in blue. 
That, for lack of better words, that's the 10-day forecast. That's the stuff that we want in the end. All right, that's the stuff we want to get. But as you can see, it's buried in a bunch of other stuff. All right, and if you look here, here we've got somewhere in here, let's see, title. And it's got conditions. It defaults, for whatever reason, to Nome, Alaska. That's what we, where that says Nome, Alaska, we want to be able to change that, and that's on that first page. That's our edit text. Does that make sense? So we want to put in Wentzville, Missouri, let's say, or just Wentzville. Hit enter. The second page should come up, and then we should get these 10 days' worth of information about Wentzville. That's what we're shooting for. All right? So, like I said, to do that, we're going to come in here, and even before weather query, we're going to make another class before that. All right, do we have to? Well, it's going to be kind of the class that, that weather query is going to be a part of. All right? And we're just going to call it weather. And it's going to actually have something in it. A val that we're going to just call query, and it's going, that's going to be weather query. And that's probably why I had that error before, because we didn't have this. So what we're saying here is we have a class called weather. That weather class is going to hold a weather query that we're going to refer to as query. Does that make sense? All right. The other thing you have to realize, please look up on the screen. This is really important because if you don't do this, it's not going to work. All right. If you look up on the screen here and I go back to this. See these names that are here? Query, results, channel. You've got to use those exact names. So our names that we put in our Kotlin code has to correspond with those names. Not only do the names have to correspond, the caseness has to correspond. All right? And that's just because it's going out and it's making, literally, for lack of better words, it's making an SQL call to this, to, to, to this file right here to get us the information that we want, all right? And that's just, that's the way the language works. I, I can't give you a better explanation than that if you think, well, that's a crummy explanation. Okay. And we're making it a val because we're not changing any of that stuff. We're grabbing it. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six lines that we're going to put in here. We've got one and a half of them in here right now, all right? So under this... We're going to have weather query, and that will have a val in it that's called results. And that will be a weather result. All right. And again, don't worry. It won't be green for long. At least I hope it won't be green for long. All right. In fact, it won't. It's going to go away right now because we're going to type in weather result. There it's gone. And that'll have a val in it that's called weather channel. All right, and that'll now be red. Thought it would be red. All right, oh, I'm sorry. It'll say val channel colon weather channel. Now that's red. You can see we're making our way down here. So we're saying we've got a weather class that holds a query class, that holds a result class, that holds a channel class. Does that make sense? So what's in there? Well, two things that we care about. In that channel, and I don't know if it shows it here or not, so if I'm wrong, I'll just apologize in advance, but I'm going to look here. All right, that's one. Just the one. Inside of here, in this channel, is this. See that? That's inside of that channel. That's what we want to appear on the top of the second page for our title. We want it to say Yahoo Weather dash, the name of the city, comma, the name of the state. And if it's in the United States, comma, U.S. Does that make sense? That's what we want. We don't want to have to do that. We want to tell the system to find that for us and fill that in for us. All right? 
So the next thing down here will be class weather channel and it'll have two things bar title which will be a string that's the title I just showed you and we'll also have in here val item and it'll be a weather item that will now turn red because we have to come in and make class weather I weather item All right, and the weather item will have what in it? Val forecasts. Now, this is going to almost look like I, I said it wrong to you. Okay, we are now, if you look up on the screen here, we are now down into this area. We are down in there. We're almost to the stuff we want. And whether you realize it or not, what is that? It's a list of forecasts. It's what it is. It's a list of 10 different forecasts. It's got the day, the date, the high, the low, and a very little text thing that says cloudy or partly sunny or thunderstorms or whatever. All right. So the other thing that we're going to have, or the thing we're going to have in here is Val forecast, but that is of type list of forecast. All right, that's red. Why? Because we have to put in now our last one, class forecast. Now, should I have made that weather forecast? You can if you want to. All right, but we're down at the bottom, so I'm just going to keep it as forecast. And what does that have in it? All the stuff we need. Val date, and that's a string. Val day. And that's, whoops, and that's a string. Val high, and that's a string. I'm going to hit comma. I'm going to put it on the next line so you can all read it. Val low, and that's a string. Val text, and that's a string. All right? That information that you see right there this information I'm saying it again because I think it's important enough to say again that information is what you see here so in other words what are we talking about grab any day all right there's the date 22 oh it's right there 22 March etc that's that thing there's the day there's the high there's the low there's the text that's what we're going to grab. So eventually, we're going to have to print out all that stuff in a loop. Does that make sense? Because we want 10 days worth. All right. So we've come in here and we've created today six new classes. Weather, weather query, weather result, weather channel, weather item, and forecast. All right. Now... Okay, I want to I want to finish the page that I'm on. Then we'll take a break, even if we go a couple minutes later. I'm going to go back to that forecast activity. This is where I had the error before, and I want to see if we can fix this now. Okay, I'm at least hoping we can. So title equals response question mark dot body brand, brand question mark query question mark dot results channel question mark dot title all right I don't believe so it's coming back with an unresolved reference which which typically what that says is it just doesn't know it literally see it says they rename the reference or create an extension property all right I don't think we want to create an extension property there if I do that what is it going to do but I'm wondering, because you had, had to do all, do all that renaming, where you had to put in something dot, what was that? I don't remember. What's that? Well, and I don't know if that's going to, you know, I don't think that's going to do anything. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so you're saying right here yeah. it wants weather API yeah. dot weather query dot query yeah, like that? Yeah, it's, it's right. We changed that to help. Doesn't like that either. See, I thought that was going to do it, but it didn't. I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. It's 1.32. Let's come back at 1.45, see if we can get that resolved. Did yours work? Uh, no. It was uh, giving an error when I put those in. Um, the
Which? I think we're going to end up putting it in a bit. Right, we still got a bunch of stuff that we've got to type in. My hope is that that's also when we put the rest of it in, that's going to reconcile itself. But I'm not sure.